Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, today, I want to talk to you guys about how you can build yourself a pretty good career resume. And more than anything, how you can land that job working as a credit analyst, making up to $55 an hour, simply based on your location and based on your knowledge. So I would make sure I want to make sure I want to make something very clear here. This is no guarantee that you would land the job. But what this would do is this would give you the insights and the ability that when you do get in and you do take your first, your test, your entrance exam to become a credit analyst, as employers always require that you pass a few tests, this would allow you to be able to have the, an upper hand and a way to understand what the employer is looking for and how to be successful in this industry. I have, I have actually made a video in the past, but the last video that I made in regards to this was the key credit analyst takeaways. So something that most credit analyst underwriters, mortgage underwriters have to know when they are reviewing files. I did give you some synopsis. Again, the course, the description to the course link is below in the description box. You can always check out the course. It's available on Udemy. It can allow you to be successful and allow you to learn the steps to become a mortgage underwriter. Let me go ahead and let you guys know when I started my uh, career back in 2003, I believe, I was looking at trying to become a mortgage underwriter, but I understood that there was a very, very tough process and there were a lot of things that I had to learn. Unfortunately, most companies were not willing to give you the, uh, you know, the chance to fail the test and still hire you. They required that you understood and you passed the test. And those tests are still being, de being delivered today for those individuals who will be interested in getting into the mortgage underwriting business. So again, it's a very lucrative position. You know, people who work in this position have found themselves growing with the industry. Uh, it's something that I would definitely recommend if you are looking for employment and you're looking for a way to grow, this is a great way for you to grow. So today I want to talk to you about what the underwriter does when they see assets and how they're able to review assets. Again, folks, this is extremely crucial to understand and to know because you have to understand how to review assets because when you know how to review your assets, it's one of the key uh, portions of underwriting. So when you when you talk to anyone who has been in the underwriting world, the underwriting industry before, they mentioned four things. They call it the four C's, which would be cat, which would be collateral, cash, credit, and capacity. Again, it's collateral, cash, credit, and capacity. So when you look at collateral, collateral is the property that you're purchasing or you're using to actually obtain the loan because these loans are secured loans. The second thing will be cash. Cash will be assets, which is what we're going to review today. We're going to do a quick asset review as to what you should know when you're reviewing assets as a credit underwriter. Again, the description is a, the description to the course is in, in the description below. Sorry, the link to the course is in the description link below. So you can always click on that. It can take you to the course and it can give you as much knowledge as you need to know to be successful in this business. Again, reviewing assets is extremely crucial because that covers the cash portion of underwriting. The next portion will be credit, which will be you know leaving again the a few things that you need to know when it, it, it involves you reviewing your credit. And then lastly will be capacity, which again, that's discussed in regards to your ratios and the key takeaways, which we had on the last video in regards to this credit analyst position and how you can land the job. So again, let's look at reviewing assets. Let's see a few key things here that you need to know. One is what is considered an asset? An asset is a bank statement, an IRA, Roth IRA, traditional IRA, money market, stocks, gift, gift of equity, or even use of borrowed funds. Now, folks, I want to go ahead and break down. The only thing I want to break down here will be gift of equity and use of borrowed funds. As a lot of us should already know what the bank statements will be. If you don't know a bank statement, you can please look this information up. An IRA is a retirement account. So it's known as an individual retirement account. They have those traditionally, and they have something called a Roth. So Roths, Roths and traditional, either pre-tax or post-tax. Again, you're also looking at money markets, which tend to work like savings accounts. But again, they also work where they pay you a little bit more interest. You have stocks, you have gifts, which could be gifts from any family members. And there are certain criteria that are required for gifts. But these, again, this is all covered in the course. Now, when we look at gift of equity, 
and use of borrowed funds, I want to just touch on those a little bit, simply because the gift of equity is something a lot of people don't even know that they can do. But if you are looking at purchasing a property, say, for example, from a family member, and that property, the family member is willing to sell you that property at a deep discount, they can actually go ahead and gift you the equity available on this property to allow you to have an upper hand. Again, this is something that we need to know as a community that you can help your fellow community members, especially if you have family members that you would be willing to help grow their real estate portfolio. You can actually provide them the gift of equity in your property and use that as actually some form of cash on hand for the new borrower to use to purchase the property. It's also something called use of borrowed funds. So borrowed funds could be you taking out a mortgage, a second mortgage on a property that you already own. You could be uh, taking out collateral from you know different real estate or from any kind of assets that you feel you could borrow funds from, even from your 401k or your IRA. Now, again, there's specific criteria that allow you to use borrowed funds. For example, you can use an unsecured loan or a personal loan for certain investors. And again, these are all things that are covered in my course because as a mortgage underwriter, you must know how this works in order for you to be successful in this business. So again, when in doubt on any asset review, always request for clarification. This is the reason why. It's important to receive clarification on a document than to make assumptions as this could lead to employment issues. Now, in my course, I do point out a lot of mistakes and things that underwriters need to know. This is why it's extremely crucial. Folks, if you're in the underwriting business and you find yourself struggling and you find yourself going from job to job and losing your job because of silly mistakes, this course is also for you. If you're looking to get into the underwriting business and you've never worked on, an, on a file before as an underwriter, this course is definitely for you. And if you're in the real estate business, you see you're a real estate agent, you're a loan officer, it's important also for you to know the things that an underwriter looks at and how an underwriter views a file, because again, it allows you to tailor make your your package or your loan request in a way that would allow your underwriter review this file, make it an easy process for them, and they are now able to help approve your loans. So again, I want to make sure this is important for you folks. I want to make sure that people can look, look at this information. It's a very easy format, the way it's been uh, placed. It's quite an extensive course, so it talks a lot about the key things that you should know. Now, again, I have here expiration dates because expiration dates are crucial when it comes to reviewing your assets you need to understand how to review the expiration dates on these asset files. Because again, if you are looking using an expired asset, things change when it comes to assets, especially in people's financials. So you always want to make sure you check the dates and ensure your assets are not expired according to the lender policy that you're working with. Let me explain what that means. So some lenders have a 60 day, you know, some lenders follow the agency guidelines, right? So agency guidelines say 60 days for, um, for assets, regardless of the asset type, or sometimes they say 30 days for a certain type of asset type, but you have to know all these things because your lender policy gives you a full breakdown of it. So again, by being able to check the asset dates, by being able to ensure that the assets are not expired, it gives you a leg up. Now, again, I want you to note something because yet we talked on the last slide about personal, or we talked about unsecured loans or the use of borrowed funds. So this is crucial here. Personal unsecured loans are not an acceptable source of funds for down payment, closing cost of financial reserves. Mm -hmm. Now people don't, people automatically assume I'm looking at buying a house. I don't really have enough money. Maybe I can go ahead and borrow some money and borrow this money and use this money as a down payment. I know because in the residential market, this doesn't necessarily fly. Sometimes in the commercial market, again, working as a commercial underwriter, in some instances, it could actually help. Depends on if you're raising capital. But for residential use, residential loans specifically, personal unsecured loans, if they're not gifts, are not an acceptable source of funds for down payment and closing costs or for financial reserves. So again, this course breaks down a lot of things for you guys to know. The reason why is by giving you as much insight, as much knowledge, as much understanding of what the underwriting industry looks like. Again, from a lender's perspective, it helps open your eyes to understand, okay, this is what I need to know. These are how I need to review these files. And especially for those who are looking to make this a career for themselves. 
For those of you who already have a career in a different aspect of real estate and you want to know why your loans are probably not getting approved or what you need to do to make your loans more efficient, this course can also help you achieve those things as well. I recommend for you to understand how to see things from a bird's eye view, meaning you see things from every single angle versus trying to just focus strictly on your niche. Now, understand as an underwriter, our goal is to focus on the niche. So we can still try to see things from that bird's eye view, but it's not as efficient as somebody who's working as a loan officer or real estate um, investor or even a real estate agent, because if you don't understand how to see these things from a bird's eye view, then what you do is you put yourself in a position where now you're going back and forth with an underwriter or you're going through multiple lenders and trying to get loans approved. Folks, I've seen this happen before in many cases. I've worked on files that have been through five, six different lenders, and they finally come to me. And this is what they, this is what I noticed they do. They try to learn what the underwriting process is per lender, and then they get these loans denied. And again, I'm so sure some of you can relate to this, right? As these loans get denied, then they come back to another lender because they've learned that, okay, I don't need to provide this document and this lender is going to ask for this document. And as we keep doing this, what that does is that makes time not of essence. In real estate transaction, time is usually always of the essence. So in order for you to avoid putting yourself in these positions, what's extremely crucial is that you understand that you don't want to go through the process through many lenders. Instead, what your focus is on is on understanding how to underwrite these files. So by taking the course, by learning from the course, course, you now can go out there and provide the right information to get your loans approved. Now, folks, just to kind of touch one more thing on personal loans, when we talk of personal and unsecured loans, this type of loans could be signature loans, lines of credit on credit cards, and overdraft protection on checking accounts. So as you noticed here, they didn't say anything about home equity lines of credit, because a home equity line of credit is still secured against your collateral. Right. So it's not an unsecured loan where you're able to take a loan. It goes that you have something put down as a collateral, then that loan is not considered a personal or unsecured loan. So, again, the idea of the course is to explain all of these things to you to make it easy for you to understand what's needed, what's required, how you can be successful. And by giving you these tools and these tips, it again allows you to make your process of working on these loans extremely easy, allows you to be successful in your business, and more than anything, allows you to, if you, you want to make credit analysis or being a mortgage underwriter a priority or a career move in your life, it allows you to have a leg up. It allows you to be more successful. It allows you to grow with your company because you come in as an extremely knowledgeable person and you can only take it further. So again, thank you guys for listening. I'm extremely excited. Don't forget the description. The course is in the description below. The link to the course is in the description below. I'm always willing to be available. So part of what I've done in the course is to provide you guys some of my contact information. So after you take the course, if you have questions and you try, you need some understanding, you need some help, you need some mentorship, I want to be there to help you through the process as well. So enjoy this process, enjoy the course, and I wish you much love, much success. Thank you. Take care.